All right. Our, our mantra for this class and for, for all programming classes is, of course, DRY. And that was especially relevant when we had the leak going on over here, but even now with the leak, with the leak done, uh, seems to be fixed. Uh, it's still relevant. And again, DRY stands for do not repeat yourself. All right. And as, as I stated uh, before, almost everything we do in programming or, or web development um, that we consider a good practice is is basically uh, oftentimes, I won't say uh, always, but oftentimes relates to putting stuff in a place so you can reuse it and use it over and over again. Even in the most basic sort of web development when you're doing static pages, you have your HTML and you have your CSS in a separate file. Why? Why not combine them? Well, if you have them in a separate file, then you can reuse the CSS and you don't repeat yourself. All right, so you can have the CSS in one place and you can have the HTML in another. So again, then when you come to uh, more programming stuff as opposed to, to, to uh, HTML development, you do things like create functions, create classes, and so on. Uh, the very reason, or a big part of the reason, of using the .NET framework is so we don't have to repeat ourselves, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's components that uh, were created to do certain things, and, and we don't have to go through the trouble of reinventing those or recreating them. Um, we can apply things in a consistent manner then. We can use components that have already been tested. Um, and again, it, it's a win all the way around. So there's a couple other areas that the .NET framework allows us to create stuff so that we don't have to repeat ourselves. All right. Any of you remember, uh, if you had me for CISS 216, you, you developed a project, and you developed uh, a series of HTML files, static HTML files, and you developed a CSS file. And it was nice because if you had any change in the CSS, you just need to change it in one place, and the change got propagated to, to every file that used it. So that was, that was a good thing. But one of the things that you ran into is if, you, if your change was to the HTML, well, then you had to go and make it on every single page, assuming that you first created a template, then cloned it. All right? um, there's no way to put a chunk of HTML somewhere that um, you could reference from a number of different places and get the benefit of reusability and get the benefit that if you changed something in the common HTML, then everything that used that common HTML would get it. And different server-side uh, scripting languages take different approaches to that. Uh, in PHP, there's what are called include files, where you can put a chunk in an external file and you can just include it. One of the big ways that .NET does that is with master pages. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start out by um, going in and actually seeing what we get when we don't say create an empty website, but when we say create a .NET website. So we'll take a look at that first, because that does involve master pages. And then we'll go on and we'll create some master pages on our own. But that's sort of a good way to kill two birds with one stone. I've been saying since the beginning of the semester that one of these days I'll go in and create the, the .NET website as opposed to an empty dot .website. Well, today's that day. Uh, and in turn, that will be a way of introducing um, master pages to us. So, let me go and get everything set.
So I'm going to go up here and say file, new, website. But instead of saying create an empty website, I'm going to say create an ASP.NET website. And I'm going to be using Visual C Sharp, so I'll click on that. So um, I'm going to give it a name. Let's put it up here. And Yeah, it's like it's so critical what I call this, right? <laughs> uh, that, that if I give it the wrong name, the, the, the class will go downhill from there. Uh, I want to say, uh, I'll say a, a, a created non-empty <laughs> website. I, I, want to, I want to differentiate this from the stuff that I'm going to create myself later. All right, so um, this will be completely confusing, so... Um, <laughs> That way, you know, you'll have to open it up and study it to understand what's going on. All right. Yes, it does exist. Or yes, I wanted to create it. Okay. Now, I get more stuff for free when I do this. All right. Yay, that's always a good thing, right? If once it's done chugging along and doing its thing, we'll notice that we'll have several files and several folders that we can put our stuff in. So if you remember before, when I created a um, empty website, all I got for free was the web config. You have to have a web config, right? So even if it's a, quote, empty website, they give you the web config because you need that to be an ASP.NET website. But look at all the goodies we have now. We have an account folder, an app data folder, a scripts folder, a styles folder. And we have actually two pages, a master page, and a global ASAX. Wow. All right. Let's look at this stuff in Windows Explorer so maybe we can get a better look at it. The account allows us to create accounts associated with this. We're going to do authentication. Uh, we're not going to really talk about that right now, so we'll just leave this one for now. But it puts that hook in there so that if we have the ability to like log on to the website, that hook is already there for us. And there's some, some pages and stuff associated with that, that that we can hook into. All right. Why? Well, again, logging into a website is something that most larger scale websites you do, right? You know, you log into Facebook, you log into Angel, you log into eBay, all right? Now, you can certainly go to those sites, or at least some of those sites, without logging on. But again, for the most part, you know, to, to, to get take advantage of the full functionality, you need to be logged on. So account folder has stuff in there that sort of facilitates that. Uh, it gives us, again, a framework for, for building our own sort of account stuff. App data is where our databases are going to live. Okay? One thing about app data is that there is special permission set on the app data folder, which prohibits files from that folder from being served to a client, all right? And that's done for security reasons. If you think about it, you're not going to send the database to a user. You're not going to want the client to be able to download the database or something goofy like that, right? If anything, when we write database queries, we're going to run queries, get some answers, and create a, a web page that displays those answers. So. Yeah, we need to access 
just a database. So we can pull the stuff out of what we need, but the user, the client, doesn't need to directly access the database. They will access our pages, which will access the database. So therefore, the, the, the upshot of this is that there's special permissions on the app data folder that prohibit files from within that folder from being served. All right? So what does that mean? That means that that's not a place to put your images, is sort of the bottom line here. All right? If you put your images in there, it'll act like it can't display the image. It'll act like it's a broken image. All right? So the only thing that belongs in there is database stuff. So we'll leave that aside for a few more classes. Uh, but in the meantime, don't think, oh, my images? Yeah, that's some of my data. I'll put it in there because that won't work. All right? We have scripts that we can put in here. Um, there's some cool jQuery stuff. I'm doing some really neat jQuery stuff in my uh, mobile web uh, development class. Uh, if any of you are interested in taking that in the spring, that's kind of a good one. Um, and we're doing some neat jQuery. jQuery, again, what is jQuery? It's a framework um, for doing lots of nifty stuff client side. So this is an oversimplification, but essentially the ASP.NET handles a lot of the, the, the cool server-side components and, and server-side framework. does some client-side stuff as well, but uh, mainly thought of as a server-side tool. jQuery provides a whole set of neat little um, things that, um, the, the, the framework things that can help you out in, in doing client-side stuff. So they start you off with some scripts in there, and then, of course, you can put any of your own scripts in there as well. Styles, that's a place to put your style sheets. So in addition to giving you these files, they sort of nudge you in the right direction for organizing your files well. All right, so they give you the stuff for free, and oh yeah, by the way, you know, if you're smart, you'll follow the scheme and, 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 and divide your files and organize them well. And then we have, let's see, some pages and a master page. We'll be talking about that in, in in big detail coming up in a couple minutes here. All right. Web config file, which we uh, have always seen. All right. And a global ASAX file. All right. And let's look at that one inside Visual Studio. What we can do is we can put some special code in here that fires off when certain things happen relating to the application. So, when the application fires off, we can start some processes if we want to, or we can log some things. You could use this definitely for logging to indicate like any time the web server crashed, when it stopped, when, it's, when it started again or when the .NET application crashed. We can also do some things when the session starts. And then likewise, we can do some things when the session ends. We'll talk more about browser sessions. Essentially, a browser session is pretty much what you'd expect it to be. It would be from the time someone accesses a website to the time they leave. Uh, we'll define more specifically what we mean by leave later on, because it's not necessarily uh, apparent uh, when someone leaves a website. But we'll talk about that later. So we can put in here code that, that does some things during um, special events. All right. One thing we might do is we might put something in when there's an unhandled error to log it, so that we can later on go and review um, the errors. But again, these are different events that happen, and we can write special code to log or do some kind of housekeeping or whatever we need to do when those events occur. Web config is a little bigger than we had seen before because it gave us a lot more free stuff, it gave us more stuff in the web config.
lot of these things are mechanisms for accounts, for logging on, and so on. So those hooks are in place to do that. There are also some hooks in place later on when we start using databases. This connection string is sort of a, a place that we'll add stuff to. Okay, so that's an overview of the stuff that we get for free. All right, here. Um, let's look at sort of what our main topic is today, and that is the master page and the ASPX pages that use that master page. All right. What is a master page? Well, a master page is a chunk of code, and it can be HTML code, and it can be corresponding C-sharp code behind that goes with the, the, the shared HTML code. But the idea is, is this is code that's going to be shared on multiple pages on our website. All right? Think of it as like being the template for which we're going to build our web pages. If we were doing this back in CISS 216, what would we do? We'd make a template would create an HTML file, a template, and would put our banner, would put our navigation, would put our content area, would put our footer, would be happy with the way that looks, and would be happy that we had everything right in that. And then would go and would start cloning those pages. All right? The problem in static HTML, though, is when you do that, you've now made copies of that original page, so if you need to go back and change something in the original, you have to change all the copies now. With ASP.NET master pages, you can put some shared code, all right, in a master page, and then have any number of pages extend that, all right, and add what's custom just to that page. So, here is our master page, site.master, as a different extension. It has associated with it a code behind file. Right now we're not really going to spend a lot of time talking about the master page's code behind file. We're going to look more at the UI aspect of the master page. And if we look, this is what our master page looks like. So we can go and we can customize this to be whatever we want it to be. Right now, it has a nice little style associated with it. And it has a couple of links up here. All right. As my ASP.NET application, I can go and change that label to say An empty site. I can get rid of that logon component because we're not going to worry about that right now. So I'll, I'll click to delete that. I can go in and maybe put in the header a paragraph that talks about this site. So I can alter this any way I want to. I can add an image to the banner if I want to, um, and so on down the line. All right. Now, that's the master page. In other words, every, and if we look, that text isn't very readable, so we better go and change the CSS for that. And again, it gave us the CSS that it's going to use which is uh, in this folder, site CSS. 
Um, so I'll go in and change to that simply by using the class of header and paragraphs within that. Okay. So far, everything that we've seen in this master page looks like the stuff or the kind of stuff that we've seen in our ASPX pages with one difference that we haven't looked at yet. And we'll look at that right now. If we look in here, there are two content placeholder tags. All right. When we think of a placeholder, we think of a blank spot that's going to get filled in later by something. All right. For example, when you did your web pages in CISS 216, you might have made an HTML template, and for the content area, you might have put Greek text or just something goofy just, you know, just to fill up the space so that you could check the fonts and check the size of things and, and all that. So you might have put some dummy text in there, all right? And then when you went and you cloned that page, you went back and deleted the dummy text, the placeholder, and replaced it with the, the good text, the actual stuff that you want. With master pages, it's a little bit different. We can define as many of these placeholders as we want. In our case, there's two. All right? There's one up in the header so that we can put in stuff in the header. And then there is one in the body of the page. I pointed in the wrong spot. It's further down. One in the body of the page. All right. This is where each page that inherits from the master page that uses the master page, this is the, the two spots where we can put our own code. All right. So we don't put anything in the master page other than a placeholder. All right. Then for each page after that that we use that we clone the master page using we fill in those content placeholders with some actual content, and it will get put there. All right? So when we code a page now, we're not coding everything about the page. We're saying the master page it comes from, and we're filling in those two blanks. Yes? Can we add others? Absolutely. Okay. If, you had more, uh, if you had more placeholders, let's, uh, let's look at this. All right. Right now, there's a placeholder in the head of this where you could put JavaScript or other CSS or whatever. And then there's a content uh, placeholder in the body over here. Let's say, for example, there was um, a sidebar that varied from page to page. All right. You could put then a sidebar content placeholder and fill that in on every page. Again, these content placeholders, you can put as many of them as you want. They give you two for free, right? One in the head, one in the body, because that seems reasonable, you know. You won't necessarily always have something in the head. You could have things in the head, all right? But you don't necessarily have things in the head. But typically, you will have something in the body placeholder for each page. All right. So then... When we go and we create a page that uses that master page, the only code we put in is code to fill in those placeholders. All right? So notice that in the actual page, default.aspx, 
we refer to the master page up here on the first line, and we say, hey, this page uses our master page. Okay? By virtue of saying that, we know there are two content placeholders that we need to fill in. This ASP, uh, ASP content tag corresponds to the content placeholder. So it's defined as a placeholder in the template, in the master page, and it's defined as a piece of content in the page that clones the master page. Now in this case, I don't have anything in the header content area. Just as I said, typically you don't necessarily have. But on the default page, in the body's content placeholder, I have some content. Okay. Notice that how do you associate, if you had multiple content uh, placeholders, how do you associate it? You associate it by using the master page's content placeholder ID. So in other words, we're going to look at this. The site master has a content placeholder called main content. Our default page then has a content tag that has a content placeholder ID that's associated with that main content, content placeholder. So this is what matches up this content area with this content placeholder. You had a question? Yeah, I was just wondering where the content came from. I didn't, on the other. On this page? That said welcome to ASP.net. Where that came from? Yeah. Uh, that, when, when, we, when we created a, a website, it gave us that content for free. It just put some content in there. So we could go and certainly change that, you know, to be whatever we want. But that's that's just the default when it that's that's what it put in that. But we just drag them in from the left hand side if we want more. Yeah, you, you put them in. Do, at this point, you're doing everything that you've done so far with your .NET pages. All right, we can get rid of all this stuff, and we can go and we can drag our calendar control over, and so on. We can put anything we want to in there: label, a form anything we want to in there. Now notice I can't do something like this. Alright. I got the big blue squiggly. That's a sign I've done something wrong. What have I done wrong there? Why is it an error? Go ahead. Does it have to be within the content? It has to be within the two content placeholders. All right. So on the pages that inherit from the master page, the only place you can put content is where the master page is expecting that content. Where does the master page expect content? It expects content in the content placeholder. So I can't simply just put stuff on, on the page because then it doesn't know how to integrate that stuff with the master page. All right. This content, on the other hand, I can put in here because, oh yeah, it knows that this content, this ASP.NET calendar control, belongs in this content placeholder, so it belongs there. So what it's going to do for every page that inherits from that master page, it's going to take the content tags and plop that content where the content placeholder is. So it's going to fill in those blanks with the stuff that we specify in the corresponding content. So let's go and view our default page. All right. So let's go and uh, view our default page. And sure enough, when we look at that default page, we'll see 